All right, guys, welcome back. I have one more DIY modification that I want to make to my one sticking setup. And that modification is to attach these S beaners to both ends of my Dynaglide pull rope. So in my quest to figure out all of this one sticking stuff, whether or not it's for me and what products I'm going to use, uh, I was 99.9% .9 nailed down of what I'm going to use. Shakar mini stick, 8th inch fullberry am steel, Schaefer cam cleat, 3 step aider, night eyes gear ties, uh, definitely the Canyon 9mm rope. This is a, a roll pouch from Custom Gear Modifications. Uh, I'm unsure of the Mad Rock Safeguard versus just a figure eight and a Prusik, but uh, we'll figure that out a little bit later. But the one thing that I hadn't quite figured out completely was what all I'm going to utilize my Dynaglide rope for. And so when I get to a tree, I climb the tree and my bow's on my back. But when I get down or go to get down, one of the things that was difficult this past year is if my backpack is on this side of the tree, my bow's on this side of the tree, getting my backpack, holding it, putting pressure on the tree, locking my bow back in. And so what, I, what I'm set out to do or determined to do is on one end of this Dyna, Dyna Glide, I am going to attach this number one Night Eyes uh, S-Beaner and I'm going to attach it via a lock and Brummel splice and then I'm going to tuck the tail end in the main line. And this is going to be so that I can just simply hook to the, the, the cam system on my, my bow and just let her go down. And then on the other end, not one of these ones, these are the number three, but um, Night Eyes uh, makes a number two S beaner that's just slightly bigger than the number one. And that one will go to um, attach right behind my scaffolding hitch. And that will be used to pull my repelling system down. So let's jump right into it and talk the tools that you will need to complete this little modification. Really, the only tool that you'll need is this guy right here. And this is what they call a loop turner. I think this is a Dritz loop turner. You can get three of these off of Amazon for like $5.98. That price changes a dollar here or there. I'll put a link in the description below. And uh, they're well worth it. Other guys, there's some guys that have used uh, just small gauge wire, whatever you can do to pull the rope through itself. But really for the price, uh, I don't regret buying this. It's, it came in huge making this eighth inch full berry am steel. So again, for a couple bucks, you can buy a loop turner, and this has saved my hide quite a bit. The other tool I want to use is just a knife, my Havilon knife, and I'm just essentially going to peel back a few strands of this braid, cut it, and that way that when I bury the tail end back through the main line, that it will just have a cleaner transition. So again, the loop turner, and if you prefer a Havilon knife. I'm going to zoom up so you can see up close and personal, and uh, we'll show you exactly how to make the locking Brummel splice and then bury the tag in back through the main line. Now the first thing you're going to want to establish is how big of a loop you're going to need. Uh, I could make a loop that big. You can make a loop however big you want. For me and my purpose, I want to make the smallest loop I can so it fits over this Night Eyes S beaner. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I am simply going to give myself, I don't know, approximately two and a half inches of a tail like that. And then at that point, that's where my loop is going to start. So I'm going to pull that tight and just making sure you can see that right here. It is a super, super small loop. What you're going to want to do here, if that is your loop, you're going to want to tuck your tail through the center of the main line to create that loop, okay? So all you're going to do is just push this rope together and you can see it, it begins to make an accordion. And then this is where the loop turner comes in handy. Just take this loop turner, kind of find the center of the strands and push that right through the braid, okay? Then from here, go ahead and take your tail end and hook it right there in that little loop. And then you can latch your gate 
like so. And then you're going to pull that tail end right through the main line like so. And so the next thing that you need to do is you need to take the tail of your main line, which is all the way back here. Hopefully I won't get any big knots and I'm just going to spread that out. But you're going to take the tail of your main line and now you're going to feed that through the middle of the tag end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that, simply pull this little loop tight, and then I'm going to scrunch up the tail end. Push my loop turner right through the center, like so. Once you get the tail end of your main line, go ahead and put it in the loop. Shut your gate down, and then just pull it through, just like you did before, like so. And then when I feed this all the way down, I have 34 foot with this. I'm actually going to take some of that out because I don't need all that. You'll see here in just a moment when I feed the main line back through the tail end, it's going to create a figure eight or a locking Brummel. All right, like so. Pull that back out a tad. Show you that figure eight. It'll be a nice tight loop. See if that'll come through. Basically, I made a figure eight. And when I pull that all the way tight, I just grab the top of the loop pull it down through like so. I've essentially weaved both lines through themselves. Okay, so that makes what they call the lock and Brummel splice. I can take my little S-beaner and uh, go ahead and see if it fits through the loop here at this point. It fits perfect. I didn't, want a, I didn't want a big loop. I wanted something that fit nice and tight and that works very, very well. So now that I know that that's the right size, what I'm going to do now I'm going to try to pull just one or two of these strands out. Just reach down, just grab one strand. Pull. Separate a strand like that. Okay. I want to actually do a couple of them. If you had to, you could just take the little hook on your loop turner and pull them out. But here's here's what I mean meant by thinning the rope. I just pulled three of those strands out like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut those off. This should be good. And all that does is thin the diameter of the rope. I could actually go one more. I might go ahead and go one more. So at this point, you now have your tag end or your tail end. We just removed four strands. Basically, I'm going to line it up. Here's my, the bottom is my main line. This is my tag end. So I'm going to put them together and then I'm going to come down about an inch, an inch past where my tail is. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and scrunch this material up. And then from there, I'm going to feed my loop turner right up the center of this braided line. Like so, just kind of push it in there. It gets a little tricky here or there, but just keep scrunching, keep scrunching your material material up as you slowly push that up through, like so. And then again, all I did was insert the loop turner right into the hollow braid. I'm just going to feed that all the way up. I want to feed it all the way up until I come to the bottom of my knot. And then I'm going to push it out right there at the bottom of that knot, like so. I don't know if that's focusing. There we go. Just like that. Now here's the advantage of a, uh, the ease of a loop turner and also the ease of you cutting or removing a few of those strands. Take that end right there, put it in your loop, latch the gate, and then basically you're going to pull, pull that down through itself, okay? 
the rope, kind of work it as it goes down to the center of itself. There we go. And you're going to pull that tail end right through the center of the main line. And that's what it's going to look like when you do so. And the reason we went an inch past is now we can just take this main line and pull that and it, it buries that tail in nice, okay? So there we go, there's a lock and grummel splice. My s beaner will fit right into that very, very, very nicely. Like that, no knots, nice splice. Well, there you guys have it. Two and a half, three minutes tops. You can take a knot and you can make it look nice. You can make it look sleek. These are just essentially two lock and grummel splices and you take the tail end and run it back through the main line. One of these uh, S-beaners is going to be used to lower my bow down and the other one's going to go behind my scaffolding hitch and it's going to be used to pull my rappel rope down when I am done. But that completes all the little DIY modifications that uh, I'm making to my one sticking setup. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, good luck to you this season.